Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my desk. Today we're gonna to be doing this whole thing. Uh, so if you've been following along, it's been several weeks where we've been working on this desk and we finally have the build series up. So now we're going to go through and look through this step by step and take a look at it, which I'm really excited about and I hope you like it. Let's dive in. It is finally time to put this all together into one video. This has been a fun series to, to put together. I, I want to start to say a huge thank you to Matt Cremona uh, for these two slabs. I, I got two slabs from him a few years ago, which I made the dining room table out of, and I went back and I got two more slabs from the same tree that I can make these two desks out of. And uh, these were a lot of fun. They're each about 200 pounds and uh, very very heavy, but I was able to get both of them into my minivan and drive the five hours south to my home. So we get these home and now we can start working on them and flattening them out. This is a lot of work. I decided to do these ones uh, mostly by hand. And so that means scrubbing and scrubbing and scrubbing and scraping and scrubbing and scraping. But thankfully they were actually pretty flat. Uh, went back and forth with the winding sticks, uh, just hitting the high spots, bringing everything down into true. Uh, one of the big problems that people have is that they, they try to do the whole slab. You only hit the high spots when you're flattening something out. Don't worry about anything that's low. Uh, that way it will you know, bring everything down to the distance of what is low. Now we're going to be doing some epoxy fill on some of these cracks. I was originally thinking of doing bow ties and things like that, uh, but I really like the idea of just doing an epoxy fill. Uh, it, it fits my personality and it works well and I like the way it looks, so that's what we're going to be doing here. We're going to be using uh, Total Boat's uh, Thick Set. This is a, uh, a really nice um, thick setting epoxy so you can put it in several inches uh, deep most you really can't go much more than a quarter inch but this will allow you to do a nice thick pour on there uh, the other nice thing about this is it cures relatively quickly it's about two days in comparison to some of the others out there that are thick set are like three or four days or a week long um, so two days is actually really nice for a thick setting epoxy we're going to be using this Tyvek tape to back everything off, fill it all the way in, and then we can flip the slab over and flatten the other side. And this should be the top of the desk. And so it's going to be the exact same thing over again. Uh, check for any low spots, only hit what's high, and scrub away. Start with your big plane, and then bring, your in, bring in your smoothing plane and get it down to it. And then we're going to scrape it for the finish smoothing on here. Uh, I'm going to take it pretty close to where I want, but uh, as we're going to be doing some work on the base, we're going to leave it alone and we'll do our finished smoothing a little later. Let's work on the base itself. Most of this are out of uh, pieces of oak that are inch and a half by three inches. I kind of like that dimension. It doesn't look quite like a two by four uh, because it's a little bit different, but it comes out uh, very, very well. Um, some of these I was able to uh, I get them at uh, three and a half inches, and so I had to rip off a half inch on them. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's what I had to do to get down to the uh, the three inch that I wanted. We're going to cut them all to length and, and fit them in. And if you want uh, plans for this, um, I have all those available on my website so you can actually see all of the exact measurements and what I went off of for this. It's actually a pretty easy uh, design to make. There isn't that much to it um, other than the bent pieces. On the, the foot and the brace that goes underneath the desk, we're putting a, a bit of an angled detail on it. It's just kind of a, a nice little uh, foot design that, that fits well with it. So the steep angle we can cut across here, but for the longer one, we take it over the saw bench and rip it down. It uh, comes out pretty cleanly, but we need to do some smoothing to get it down to that final shape, making sure that it's still square to the sides. And I love the look of uh, an angled end grain on, uh, on oak. It really comes out. So we're going to be cutting a mortise and tenon that then connect the foot to the vertical at the back of the desk. And this um, tenon is actually just going to be basically a large inch and a half by inch and a half peg. And so we're cutting off the cheeks on either side of it, um, but I'm only doing it on two sides. I cut close to the line, but still try and stay away from a little bit. It makes it easier to come back and clean it up with a chisel. Although most problems usually come from the chisel work, not the saw work, because uh, you cut close to the line and then you come back and you chisel and you chisel a little more and then you chisel too far. On the mortising side, we're going to take out most of the material with the uh, brace and bit and uh, then take out the, the rest on there. A lot of people ask me why I chop in the vise, and uh, sometimes I do that because I like having the open space underneath it. Sometimes I do that because I can't clamp it on the bench to chop down in. Uh, sometimes I just do that because it's, it's just easy. Um, so it, it does take out a little bit of the impact when chiseling, but uh, not as much as you would expect. 
looks like it's taking out a lot more than it is, but it works relatively well if you have a good vise. So now on the main stretcher, this is what's going to go from one end of the desk to the other. Uh, we have a very, very large tin on this. It was uh, uh, four inches by three inches. And uh, I cut as close to the line as I can, but there's always some gaps. You can use the chisel to check and make sure that it's nice and flat all the way across. But then come in and clean it up. Uh, I want to make sure that my, my cheeks on this are, are, are good and tight because I want this joint to be, uh, I want this joint to be really, uh, well, a good fit because it's not going to have any glue. I want it to be a mechanically sound joint. We can cut off all four sides in this. It just makes it a little bit easier and it makes it a little bit cleaner so it looks better when it, uh, when it comes together. Ooh, I love those light little curls. Now we need to cut the mortise through this. So this is a three inch mortise that goes all the way through this. And for that, I'm gonna be doing some auger work uh, because I'm coming through half inch on a hole. Oops, I was a little off center there. <laughs> when, you're, when you're drilling a long ways through, if you're not careful, you're going to run out. Uh, but inside this, it's really not as much of a problem because as long as the opening and the exit are where they want, the inside doesn't matter as much. Then we can check the fit and see where it's a bit tight and it just wasn't going down here. Usually that means a little bit more paring and cleaning out. If you put a chisel in there, you can check and make sure that it's flat all the way across the, uh, the mortise inside and see where you need to actually do some adjustment. And there we have our stretcher that connects into the verticals and then we connect connect the feet into the verticals and now we have the basic structure of the base. Now for this I want to put in some curved details and so we're actually going to be doing some laminate, lamination bending here. I'm going to be using Total Boat's high performance and this is the, the stuff that I really really like for bent lamination um, because it will, it, it will you know, it's a high performance glue. It will hold this together nicely and will help keep it in shape so there's less bend back. Um, really, really good stuff for this. So I'm go using a quarter inch thick material. Um, I didn't get the chance to put the clips in of actually resawing this all down, but it was a uh, quite a chore. I have a video on that if you want to see that. And using a ratchet strap, just bend it around a form, bringing it to the right size, and then use a whole pile of hand clamps to squeeze it out and make sure everything's good. After letting it sit overnight, we can pull it out, and now we have our bent surface. We just have to clean this up, and that means a scrub plane, taking down the majority of it, getting it close, and then planing it down to the three inch width that I want on this. But most of it's done with the scrub plane, get it down to the depth you want, then bring in the smoothing plane because the grain is going different directions on this. Now we're going to lay it out on the two feet. And again, if you have any, if you want to see any more detail on any of these, I have a dedicated step-by-step -step video on this where I, I go into each of these into far more detail rather than just running all through it at once. We have to cut off this arch to match the top and bottom of the leg structure. And then we need to cut in a half lap on either side. And these are just going to be half lap together because gravity will basically hold them together. We will be gluing them in the end, uh, but in this case, uh, the half lap is, is more than strong enough because there really isn't any, um, any, any force on it that it won't uh, be able to handle. Here again, you can see chopping in the vise. I'm doing this because it's a, a curved surface and I can't really clamp it to the bench very well. But it actually works out pretty well. Get it close with the, the chisels, and then I'm going to bring in a file and rasp if it needs a little bit more work, and detail it down. But take the chisel as close as you can, um, but because it's an angle, I don't want to bust out the, the little tip on it. The, the files and rasp will actually do a little bit better work on that. Now we need to cut out the half lap on the foot itself. And this is a uh, weird one because it's kind of at an angle and you expect to see these curved sides. Because it's such a slight curve over such a little distance, uh, there really isn't any reason to curve them and I actually just kept them straight. Clean them up again with the file and we can go for the test joint. Ooh, I like how that fits together. That's happy. So there you can see the leg structure. We're going to make two of these per desk, and then we can connect in the, uh, the brace that goes between them. For the actual leg structure, we're going to be gluing this together rather than just leaving it. For, um, just makes it a little bit simpler. Uh, I thought about originally making it so I could take it apart in pieces, but it really doesn't have any reason to have this leg structure come apart. So we're actually draw boring it together. Drill the holes slightly off center and pound them in. Now on the, the back structure, there is another arch that goes from end to end that is much, much larger. Um, I actually did a live video showing how that was uh, bent live. Um, and actually uh, building the frame and bending that out. So if you want to see that, uh, you can see the link to that as well. 
And for this, we have a half lap joint that then connects into the vertical on either end. Uh, just making sure that it's basically the same thing, just a slightly smaller joint, because this will be held in place with a pin. Uh, we're going to use a steel pin to hold it down so that it can be taken apart, because I want the back stretchers to be able to come off of the two legs. So again, chopping the device. It uh, really isn't that much of a problem. Just have a little bit of work. File them out, smooth them out, check the fit. File them out, smooth them out, check the fit until they finally come down in. And there we go. That is a vertical into the, uh, the back arch. Now we're going to start adding chamfers and easing the edges, getting things ready for the actual finish. I'm going to ease the edge on the bottom of the feet, and then all of the exposed surfaces are getting a very large chamfer. The, the chamfer on the arches means a spoke shave. Ooh, I do like the spoke shave. Just eyeballing it to bring them all to about the same chamfer. Now we're going to be getting ready for the finish, and we have to actually scrape these all down. Uh, I find scraping to be just a, a fantastic way to, to, to get them smooth and ready. You don't have to worry about sanding, and it's, it's a good surface that I really, really enjoy. And so usually the last thing I'm going to do to a board before adding finish is to scrape it down. But in this case, we need to do the glue up, so we are going to be scraping it before the glue up, and uh, this will allow us to use the high performance glue put it all together and then we can draw drive in these draw bore pegs. I'm doing them out of walnut because I had walnut on hand and I thought hey walnut looks good so let's use walnut in there. So we drive those in and we're good to go. Now we need to work on the square pegs that go through the back braces into the leg structures. Um, I do have a, a video showing how these were made. Actually a, a local friend who's a blacksmith was able to uh, twist these up for me. Did an amazing job on them. I absolutely love them. So that's it on the structure. Now we can go back to the top. There were a ton of bug holes that we had to do some filling, and I used uh, the uh, high performance to fill most of them, and then this uh, colored CA that comes in and can just do the last tiny details that the high performance won't quite stick down into. After that, we can start doing some of the carving inlay. I want to put my logo into the top of this. So I'm using transfer paper to put the, the logo onto here. And I'm going to do this in two-tone, uh, because if I did it all in one, then it would look like triple X, and I want it to look like WW. So <laughs> we're going to chip carve in the, the lettering on one of them, uh, the one that's behind the other, and use a, a blue tint that goes into the high-performance uh, epoxy. And I, I, I thought about what tint to use, and I've got like seven different colors that I that I put in there that I've gotten over the years, and I don't remember exactly which one it was because there's so many of them out there. Um, but once it cures, then we can come back in and chip out the other side and fill that in with a black. And this one was a, a powdered dye that comes in. Hit it with a torch to try and get rid of the bubbles. The more bubbles you get rid of, the less chance that you're going to have any little gaps in it. And then smooth it down. And we're going to actually scrape the entire table, get it ready for finish. A few other little details of adding chamfers and cleaning things up. We're going to chamfer the ends. Um, we rounded the front uh, where all of the live edge was at. But on the ends, adding that chamfer, I like the way the look of the chamfer goes into the rounded live edge. We're using some of Total Boat's penetrating epoxy to uh, fill in the, there are a few punky spots on there. And then on the top, we're actually going to be using Yorkshire grit and uh, some other um, polishing pads to polish the epoxy so that you can look down into it and it's nice and clear. For the top, I'm using Rubio Monocoat. It is about the closest look I can possibly get to uh, boiled linseed oil, but still giving a really protective finish. And it's one of those incredibly simple finishes to put on. You just slather it on, let it soak on, and then 15 minutes or so, come back and wipe everything off and just polish it down in, and you get this beautiful surface that really shows off the texture of the wood, matte finish that is uh, one of my absolute favorite because it really brings out the color in the wood as well as just showing off the texture of the wood. It's not covering it up with a thick film. And now for the fun part, we can take it upstairs and put it all together. And this is where the excitement really comes together. We start to see these things coming in and I can lug this thing up the stairs. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty heavy. Um, but I'm, I'm really, really happy with how this came out. Um, phew, yeah, a great desk. So soon we're going to be building some drawers for it and some storage that goes above. I, I cannot say how happy I am with how this desk came out. Incredibly pleased and looking forward to using it in the future. 
So there you have it. We've got ourselves a pair of desks, and I'm looking forward to the next things. We're actually making a set of drawers that go underneath, and a rack on top so I can put printer and paper and other things like that. I am, I'm flabbergasted with how this came out and really, really happy. If you'd like to get plans for this, I do have those available on my website now. There's a link to it down below, or woodbywrite.com backslash shop, and uh, you can see it there. So. Whew, I'm, I'm excited and I am happy and I'm really looking forward to the future. Thank you everyone who has come along for this journey and I'm looking forward to the next project. I do also want to say a huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon. Without you guys, this channel wouldn't be here. So thank you for that. If you'd like to find out more about Patreon, there's a link down below. And also if you meet anyone over here who's scrolling the side, say thank you for keeping the channel up and going. Uh, I really can't say thank you enough. So thank you. <laughs> so I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Hmm. Joke about a desk. Sorry, I didn't understand. Never mind. <laughs> so what do you do in your spare time? <laughs>